just a follow up to video number 75 there's a few things you might want to do you might want to add for example the duration uh, field that we collected and have another little chart next to that so uh, you could be comparing load and duration but let's just go back to the data set first and consider what else might be possible the most obvious thing to me is that you might want to simply add in some kind of wellness measure I believe that load and wellness go perfectly together and so to have some uh, measure of how people are going uh, while they're training is very helpful so just going to put some random data in here the ran between function is great because it allows me to populate 150 odd rows without really having to try that hard so I'm simply going to have a three to nine range and when I hit enter this entire column will populate with data. Now this data is volatile which means that it's going to keep recalculating every time I do something. I do not want that so I'm going to control shift down arrow and select the entire column, copy and then paste values. So it's now just a number rather than being a calculated formula. So I'm going to select the entire column, click new rule, cell value less than or equal to let's say 5 and if they do that we'll apply the stereotypical red colour to them. I just tend to choose a slightly lighter red that doesn't completely overshadow the number. So if people are less than five in the data table it shows up as red. Now the data table is really only for you to look at so it doesn't matter that it's uh, not on a dashboard or anything like that but you could do that as well. So we could go to this pivot table page and we could add a new feature. There are two ways we could do that. We could insert a new pivot table from the database sheet from the source data or we could copy the existing pivot table. What's good about this option is that we can use the same slicer to look at both sets of data. So copy. I'm going to put it over here in uh, column T, which is right out to the right. Our field menu appears. I'm going to take out RPE and load. I'm going to refresh the data table. That'll pull in wellness as an option and drag that down. Instead of summer wellness, I would like to have it show me the average. Select a better number format simply number with one decimal place would be my suggestion and if we click on the slicer we can just check that it's connected to the pivot table we just created and it is they've both got ticks next to their name so if I now make a chart on the analyze tab choosing pivot chart we can choose a column again and we could have this next to our other chart. Even though the pivot table is not in view, our wellness chart can look quite good on its own. Hide the field buttons, change the color, uh, black or red or something like that. Do all the tidying up that you might do. And now we've got two charts and with a bit of luck, when we select just a single day, both charts are updating. This chart would probably look better with a data label. And we should definitely format this axis to only show 0 to 10. And we certainly don't need uh, extra decimal places there. 
so a much tidier looking chart still not a lot of effort has been put into it but nevertheless it's something that highlights immediately that there's a couple of people with high numbers and some people with lower numbers and that's what you're looking for the, the second thing we can do from our main data set is insert a new pivot table on a new sheet and this one will be a longitudinal report so I'll put date in the rows athlete in the filter and probably both load and wellness in our values areas wellness should definitely be an average we don't want it to be a sum but load is certainly something that uh, when we are looking at multiple sessions we definitely want to see uh, how much accumulated load they've got inserting a pivot chart combo chart would be good where wellness is a line on a secondary axis and load is a column on the primary axis make it nice and big hide the field buttons we'll put a label on that if we wanted to but what we've already got here is a load over time for a particular athlete at the moment it's showing all of the athletes so we could click inside the pivot table put in a slicer by athlete we drag that above the table I know this is a little bit of a mess at the moment but these are the kinds of things you do at the end bump it out to five or six columns or as many as you like and now we've got this interactive report where we can choose an athlete and we can see all of their data over time and see how load and wellness have tracked against each other a really obvious way to do longitudinal tracking for a particular athlete is to simply filter the database sheet now you don't need any pivot tables or charts to do this kind of thing it's simply clicking on the filter box choosing the athlete of interest and clicking OK and what will happen is that all of the non selected data sets will be taken away and you'll just be left with the particular athlete you're looking at and so this might seem a little bit crude but it's already a really interesting way to look at this particular athlete's flow of RPE wellness and load you can go back to normal by simply clicking the select all option and you're back to the full data set now on this sheet you could add a variety of additional columns they could be additional wellness measures or they could be derived values like the one I'm going to show you now um, you might do a rolling load such as rolling three day or five day or seven day loads now inside a table it can be a little bit tricky to get this to work particularly given that we have all of our athletes in one table but you can make it work and I'm going to show you how so let's put rolling load down here and just to point out on the control panel page I've put a little box here nothing more than just typing rolling average and putting 7 in the cell next to it so I could just leave that as it is or I could put a name to this value I'm going to call it rolling days by typing rolling days into the name box now if I go to the database sheet I can write a formula it's a little bit of a tricky formula but I can write one nonetheless that will calculate rolling load based upon what we have specified at the moment that's seven days but we could have the flexibility to change that to three or five or whatever we wanted before I write this formula I'm just going to shrink down these columns a little bit so it's easy to see everything on one screen the formula looks like this it is a sum ifs 
Now in some ifs we first have to specify what range is being looked at. The range that we want to sum is the load range. Now we have a bunch of criteria. The first criteria is the one we should look at initially and that is the athlete. So we want to calculate the rolling load for the athlete in this row. So this row is Wayne Connolly. So our criteria range is the athlete column and our criteria is the athlete in the current row. Our next criteria is looking at the date column and our criteria is that it is less than or equal to today so that will include today in the rolling seven day average it has to be less than or equal to today and it also has to be greater than today minus the variable that we just created called rolling days. And if we close that up and hit enter, it's going to calculate a rolling seven day average for each athlete on the fly. And so at the beginning they won't add up to much because there's nothing prior to the first of the first. But as the dates go further down, what we will see is that the numbers start making a little bit more sense. So we're getting things up around 3,000 once we've got a bunch of training sessions in there. And so if we go back to our longitudinal sheet, we make a copy of this data set and we paste it just out on the right here. On the Analyze tab, check field list to bring up this wizard again and we can do a bit more interacting with it. Drag out the two variables that are in there. Put seven day rolling load in there. Everything else can stay the same. Now with my cursor inside the pivot table the analyze tab is still available and I can choose pivot chart. Again I could use a clustered column. I could use a line chart if I wanted to such as that. Why don't I try that using markers? Just going to call that rolling load, pull the title up, hide the field buttons, delete the legend, and it's starting to look okay. Let's check that it is giving us a um, update if we choose a different athlete. Yes, both of these are changing. Now there's one final thing that I want to demonstrate to you and it's a very simple one. I have to do one little bit of admin before we can get to it and that admin is to go into our team list and insert a row. I'm going to copy Wayne down and in place of the top one I'm just going to type team. And what's good about putting team in there is that it's now available in the database when we add a new record. We can see team is the first item in our list now. What I would suggest you do for all of the sessions that you've got is to put in a value for the team. Doesn't matter whereabouts in the list it goes. but I would be putting down the total duration of the session. I'd put down the RPE that the coach believed the session was completed with. You might want to add your opinion to that as well as the strength and conditioning coach, but let's just say you're putting a coach decided value down and you don't have to put anything down for wellness. But what we now have is a team indication of training load only got one day in here now but nevertheless 
uh, you get the picture. If we went to our longitudinal sheet and we refreshed all, so I've clicked inside uh, one of the two pivot tables. Now on the Analyze tab I can choose Refresh All. Refresh All refreshes all of the pivot tables in the workbook. And if I now choose Team, we can see that we've just got one record here, which is for the first of the first. And so I've added a record for the team for each of those sessions. And if we go to our longitudinal report, we can see that now we've got an indication of the team load over the course of the entire training period and both uh, immediate and rolling load. And also on our regular pivot tables, we've got uh, the ability to look at the team as well, particularly with regard to which players are above or below the team. So you can see here that the team uh, score is the seventh record in the table. So there were seven athletes that scored greater than or above what the coach believed the session was. So uh, some interesting information to be gained. But hopefully what you've been able to figure out from this uh, sequence of two videos is that getting some simple RPE and duration information into a table for your athletes is a pretty easy thing to do and from there you can start adding more detail and more features if you want to. So thanks for watching, email me for this file if you want to and if you're looking for anything more check out my course on Vimeo.